one-on-one -on -one show now so we'll just begin so yes. good morning and good afternoon from time to job metua it's 11 30 in ghana and it's about 2 30 in uganda you know so good morning and good afternoon we we'll welcome you to uh, the one-on-one -on -one show <laughs> Yes, good afternoon, Freedom Giant, Isaac Boadu. Yes, please. And, uh, good, morning, uh, good morning, Freedom Giant, Isaac Boadu. Thank you very I much. I love you so much. I love you <laughs> very, 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 very much. You are such a phenomenal Freedom Giant, and we want to know what you have on board today, you know. So we welcome you to a one-on-one -on -one show whereby you disclose yeah. your agenda for the position you want to take off in Uganda. Yes. So today we have you from Janjo Metua, who is contesting for the deputy chairman in the Central Executive Committee of the National Resistance Movement Party, which is the incumbent government party. And I yes. want to know what you have at stake for Uganda, what you have in stake for Africa, and the change you want to bring forth in Africa as a whole. So yes, sir. We'll just begin as soon as possible and begin with the interview. Go ahead. So without much ado, I'll just begin maybe. So first of all, I want to ask you clearly, um, Pudom Janjob Metwa, what is your stand? What is your stand for the future of Uganda? What is your stand for the future of Uganda? When we talk about Uganda, this East African country, what is your stand? What uh, uh, motive do you have for Uganda? What priority do you have for Uganda? How do you want Uganda to thrive? How do you want to see Uganda in the next decade, in the next uh, two decades when prosperity comes how do you see uganda thank you uh thank you very much freedom jaya my name is uh matua job richard okay i am a ugandan by nationality but an african by nature great <laughs> so i i value my my africanhood so much great. as well as a as a, as my, my my nationality I am a teacher by profession, okay, but also study also study law. Currently, uh, currently I'm a student of law, but I'm a teacher by profession with the 14 years experience. Great. Uh, I thank I thank uh, African Voice International for giving me this chance to speak to my agenda, to speak to the issues for which I am standing, to represent the people, to lead our people in the highest organ of the ruling party called Central Executive Committee. I want to respond to your question one way. As a politician, what is the, my stand for the future of Uganda in the next two decades? Freedom Giant, Uganda is a, a beauty, first of all. Uganda was described by Sir Winston Churchill to be the pearl of Africa. The pearl of Africa, meaning the beauty of Africa. Uganda is a beauty. If you take our flora, our fauna, our climate, the topography, everything about Uganda is beauty. Now, what do I want to see Uganda in the next uh, two decades as a politician? I want to see a democratic Uganda, which is totally free where freedom of expression, speech, association, be it politically, be it religious, is guaranteed, is respected, is enshrined deep into our societies that exist in Uganda. I want to see a prosperous country with the united people, where we don't look at each other based on a, uh, this is sectarian line of religion, of tribes which is a bigger problem in Africa. I want to see a Uganda with united people that is prosperous and participating in the international arena accordingly. A country that relates well with its neighbor. As Uganda, I want to see. I want to see Uganda, which is in total peace with all her neighbor, Rwanda, Dira Congo, uh, Tanzania, South Sudan, Kenya, Ethiopia, the other angle up, and Somalia. Then a country that relates well with all African countries holding the idea of Pan-Africanism with maximum, my brother. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much for the giant job, Metua. You've spoken about how you want to see a democratic Uganda. You want to see a Uganda yes. that is at peace with all its surrounding nations and also with the whole entire continent of Africa. We've spoken about a yes. Uganda that you want to see freedom thriving in all angles, freedom of speech, communication, religious speech, um, liberty, and all of that. And that's very, very outstanding. Now, with the way yes. you want to see Uganda, do you think that indeed you can, Uganda can become a masterpiece that can indeed be out of various forms of party politics, dictatorship, and uh, various kinds of parochial uh, leadership and various kinds of ethnocentrism and all these kinds of shackles that are a hindrance to the, the, the progress of democracy in our world as a whole, not even talking about Uganda per se, but in this world we see ourselves in, you think that when you come into the platform, you can be able to stand with your party and see to that indeed, Uganda serves as a powerhouse for all countries and for all political parties to be viable indeed for all adversities in our political system to be achieved. My answer is yes, I stand for it. Why? From 1962 to 1966, when Uganda had just gotten independence, we had a democracy, though it was formed on a faulty ground, where political parties were formed alongside DGSA and tribal lines. From 1971 to 1979, we had a complete dictatorship, where President Idi Amin Dada abolished everything, abolished the parliament, abolished the election, and ruled it through decree. Now, from 1980, when Amin left, up to 1985, we also had another democracy, though it was not that sound. Then from 1996 up to date, Uganda is a democracy. So it is, it, it, it is true, we can make our democracy better. So I believe we Ugandans can do away with these narrow ideas of too much association to party politics, sectarianism, the, the the politics of of, of exclusive 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 agenda where one tribe will want to dominate another the politics of dictatorship i can tell you all of this can be ended right now we don't have a dictatorship in uganda we actually have a democracy thank you okay thank you very much Madam john job metua um in as much yes. as i respect President like uh, President Kagami, President Ekufado of Ghana, President Ramaphosa. Yes. I also same and likewise respect President Museveni. He's also a phenomenal leader. And Uganda is a country that has been known for bringing and allowing those refugees to come and settle in your country. And that's very, very credible to praise for. And um, in every country, as much as we are all working on trying to bring our country to an excellent end, of democratic end. Sometimes there may be various yes. kinds of uh, stifles in the processing in the way. Do you think that yes. Uganda can achieve a perfect democratic pedestal on their journey, whereby indeed every person, every kindred, everyone, every polit politician, whether in your party or in another party, whether with a different social perception or social philosophy, can still be adhered and accepted to in Uganda. Do you think we can allow for this if you are accepted as the deputy chairman of the National Resistance Movement, please? Yes, I do. Yes, I do, my brother. Why? In, 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 for actually from 1971 up to 1986, Uganda was a net exporter of refugees in Africa. Yeah. In fact, there were more Ugandans in exile than they are in Uganda today. But now, Uganda is a net recipient of refugees from, from her neighbor. In fact, there are no Ugandans in exile. Those that are what, in exile are for their only reason that's best known to them. I can tell you right now, Uganda is, is one of the leading countries hosting refugees in Africa. Now, democracy in, 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 in Africa and democracy in the world. My brother Isaac Boadu, democracy everywhere 
whether in Africa or in Western Europe or in America has challenges. We saw in the last presidential election in the USA, a whole city president complaining of cheating in an election. What does that mean? Democracy will never be perfect. That's why elections are supposed to be free, fair, I underline fair, transparent and credible. There will never be a perfect democracy anywhere in the world. However, we can make our democracy better. But to make our democracy better, we must address the challenges that affect our democracy in Africa and in the, in the liberal world, eh, where liberal democracy is cherished out, uh, outrightly. Now, one of the many challenges of democracy that we have is the poor political elites that we have. They, they, they are poor in the sense that they don't have faith in the democracy themselves. They don't practice democratic ideals. They don't have deep knowledge about multi-party multi dispensation. And many of them think democracy is an imposed thing from Western world. Now, we have too much influence of incumbents in democracy that we have to deal with in Africa. This is not only in, in Ghana, in the recent election, I had that. <laughs> not in, in South Africa, not in Uganda, not anywhere alone. It is a world problem. The too much influence of incumbents in our democracy, we must try to deal with it. Then political parties without clear ideology. My brother Isaac, majority of our political parties in Uganda don't have any political ideology that they try to cherish. It is only my party of national resistance movement that has clear political ideology explaining why it has retained the power for all of this law. We have four pillars of our party. Patriotism, that's believing in Uganda, promoting the Uganda net, nationalism, that is the patriotism, pan-Africanism, believing in the African agenda, believing that we are one people in Africa, we must be united for our strategic security and, and the expansion of our markets for our goods. So then we have socioeconomic transformation. That's our third pillar of national resistance movement, then democracy, which is pillar four. That is why we so much value democracy and we hold frequent general elections after every five years whereby we elect new leaders. But now some people have been blackmailing in Uganda that there has been no change of president. Yes, why? Because the president currently is winning. We have, we have changed all other, all other leaders. In fact, very soon the president will also be changed. So we should not see democracy only at the apex by looking at the president alone. Even LOC1 should not stay for life. LOC wants to also be reelected. Then, my brother, we have deep sectarianism in Africa. Sectarianism, I have seen this. If even if you go to Nigeria, you know, the the Igbo and the Fulani, eh, the, the, the the sectarianism among them, looking at the Fulani as the you know pastoralists, where the Igbos want to dom dominate. Even here in Uganda, we used to have sectarianism, where a certain tribe will want to dominate others. Now we want to end this sectarian. Anywhere in Africa, we can perfect democracy. But perfecting it will take its time. And I want to repeat this. You will never take democracy to 100% perfect. Because democracy anywhere is still having a challenge. Democracy will continue to evolve as humanity evolves until that time when we shall reach a point when everybody will be contented with the democracy we have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Zanjo Metua. You know, we all know you an African Voice International, not only to be a politician who loves his part in national resistance movement, movement, but you also love your country very well. And you always fight for people who are even not in your party or in your party, you fight for both of them. You are a nationalist, a credential nationalist. Yes. And um, yes. As you are vying for this position, we understand the change you want to bring forth. But I want to ask you something. 
when you look at yes. the African anatomy, right from East, Central, West, Northern Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, how would you yes. scale in terms of our democratic credentials on a percentage wise, in terms of elections, in terms of freedom of speech, in terms of multi-party uh, 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 credence or the presence of a multi-party system of free cooperation in terms of the rule of law, in terms of you know peace and stability, whereby people are not just, uh, there's no superiority over a particular political party because one party is in government or because we have much more politicians than a particular party and able to abuse each other. How would you, when you look at all of these things, how would you assess anatomy democratically? Are we doing well? Are we very poor? Are we on a, on, 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 on a, on a basic ground? Where are we performing much shortly? Or you think that there is more room for improvement, you know? Because in as much as I love President Museveni and I also love other African presidents also who have also taken uh, loads of years in power, sometimes we feel that in as much as we are just like a human anatomy, we have a human body, we have the hands, the eyes, the legs, and every part is contributing to each other. When you cut the hand off, it can perform quintessentially or perform excellently. Every part is cooperates effectively. So we believe that in as much as one person is also quintessential, another part of the human anatomy is also quintessential. So we see people like President Museveni being in power for so long, even though he's doing yes. well and he's allowing freedom and he's allowing development to thrive. How would you, do you still think that it, democratic dispensation is on the thrust or is doing well, or we need to accommodate more people to come in? How would you assess our democratic kind of living? Is it based on just fighting for one particular party and we promote democratic freedom in a particular political party or uh, indeed, there is a national freedom. How would you assess everything? And what would you say about some of the crises we see in our nations and some of the issues we say and we see? How would you assess everything as a whole? Thank you very much. First of all, I want to be very, very clear to you. Okay. Our democracies in Africa are still very young. It is only USA with democracy of 200 plus years. Our democracies, majority, in fact, all the democracies in Africa are less than 100 years old. For Uganda, our democracy is even, a, is even a younger than 40 years old. Because we, I told you we had a period from 1971 to 1980, which was in absolute dictatorship. You, you get the point. So now, what is my assessment of democracy in Africa? I can tell you my assessment of democracy in Africa is 50-50. 50% good and 50% bad. And I have to justify that. Now, one, we have African countries where elections have failed to take place. For example, South Sudan. Since that country got independent, no election has ever taken place. Completely not. We have other countries where there's even totally no election right now. Look at the Libya that has been disorganized. Look, eh? look, 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 look at countries like Central African Republic, the kind of democracies there. But if I can bring this home, for, for our case in Uganda, our democracy is 70% good. And why? We have regular elections after every five years. Here, people can change the leaders they want to change. If a leader is bad, behaves bad, does not fulfill what he pledges during, man, during the campaign in the manifesto, that leader is outrightly changed. And I can tell you in our parliament, almost 80% of the MOP is there. They don't return back to the house. They are, they are, they are completely changed. So we, we, we have gender certificate practice. Here in Uganda, we, we, we have slots for women. Every district sends one women, uh, uh, women representative as a woman member of parliament in our, in our, in our, in our house of representatives the National Assembly. 40% of the ministers, cabinet ministers are, are women. So we practice gender certificate to promote inclusivity. We don't want to discriminate women anymore. They were already over discriminated long time ago and we don't want to add on to that. So we are moving towards achieving 50% female to male ratio in a, our political arena. Then different, uh, Special interest groups are catered for in our politics. Disabled people, 
or people with disabilities, uh, the aged group, the youth. Then we have the other special interest group like the army. We do have army representative in our parliament. Why? Our politics has been so much that and previously by the, by the army. So we, we want to bring the army on the table to discuss whatever thing they want to discuss instead of staging military coups. That's why we have not had a military coup in the last 36 years. Yet in the, in the, in the other 24 years, we had almost eight military coups and, and eight presidents. So Freedom Giant, we have adult suffrage practice in Uganda. All adults that register to, to vote are given the freedom to vote. Nobody is denied the right to vote. Then all registered voters do participate in voting. It is only that there is a certain group of elites in Uganda that do not want to go and vote for their own reason. But otherwise, anybody who is registered by law in Uganda has the right to go and vote for the candidate of his or her choice. Nobody can stop that person from going to participate in the election. So our, our democracy in Uganda is not a percent bad. Why? I also want to give the reason. Why is it not a percent bad? Money in politics. Freedom giant, even right now as I stand, there are people who are asking me whether I have the money to compete with those that have uh, the money. You know, there are two cabinet ministers in the competition where I am. I told them we want to set a new dynamics in our politics whereby we use our ideas in the manifesto to convince countrymen and women to give us votes instead of using money to buy votes. So there is the money in our politics. That makes it very bad. So wrong leaders can be elected just basing on money, not basing on their idea. That's the one thing which makes our politics cut a percent bad. Two, we have parties without political ideology. Most of our opposition the political parties don't have any agenda, any political ideology that they can preach to their supporters. So they end up preaching, pre preaching hatred, they end up preaching sectarianism, they end up preaching evils. Something we must deal with in our politics here in Uganda. That's the second reason which makes our politics 30% bad. The third reason is malpractice. I, can, I want to be very honest. In our election, there are accusations of malpractices. There are court rulings where courts have agreed that there were some malpractices. Then elections, we are not an hour all day because those malpractices were not substantial enough to cause overturning the result. That is at the presidential level. But at the, at, the, at the lowest level, we still have malpractices in our primary election. Some people cheat to become the flag bearer. So that is the, the, the study point which makes our politics 30% bad. Then the fourth issue is having politicians eh, that have not understood multi-party democracy. I am sorry to tell you, majority of our politicians in Africa have not understood multi-party democracy. They take their political opponents as outright enemy. Yet a political opponent is supposed to be a competitor of idea. You remain the same people, but you compete using the ideas summarized in your manifesto. But we still have political opponents in Africa and in Uganda who take their opponents as outright enemy. So in conclusion, our politics is 30%, 30 bad for the reasons I have given and good for the, thank you very much. Yes, Freedom Giant. Okay, thank you very much, Freedom Giant Job Metua. You spoke about money in politics, you know, whereby people are now there's so much economic segregation and people want to use the money they have to let other people feel inferior. You spoke about yes. those more practices and you also spoke about political opponents that are trying to see themselves as alpha opponents, you know, and, you know, instead of us trying to work as an anatomy, we are trying to see our partners as enemies, you know, and, you know, now, 
the development of our countries has now become a place whereby we don't think about developing the country anymore, about getting for a particular position. But you want to create a system and take the nation as the common agenda. You spoke about creating unity, ensuring transparency, you spoke about um, ensuring grassroots participation. These are all things that have been expounded from what you just said. But in your last yeah. two agendas, you spoke about um, uh, 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 CN2 protecting Jacob Ulmanes' legacy and also yes. a generational bridging. How, I want you to expound yes. on this. How do you intend to achieve this to ensure a generational bridging whereby other generations will come and still adapt to the settings you want to you brought forth, like promotion of unity and also protecting the local Jacob Ulanas legacy. How do you intend to um, fulfill these agendas, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Freedom Giant Isaac Boadu. I stand on a six clear agenda of creating a unit of uh, ensuring or enhancing the cadership of. Uh, improving uh, transparency in our party primary elections of a, of ensuring a grassroots reach to deepen our 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 party then of promoting generational bridging and protecting the legacy of jacob olanya the man i stand to replace as the national uh, as the national vice chairperson of our ruling party now, to answer your question, how do I intend to achieve the last two objectives? One, creating a generational bridge. How do I intend to achieve that? One, I intend to propose a policy option in a, in a sec, Central Executive Committee for adoption to ensure that 60% of all the vacancies in our political arena are given to younger people below 40 years old. Mr. Isaac, almost 80% of our population is made up of very younger people. Now, if you take the age bracket from 18 to around 40 years, they form the biggest block you can talk about. So we want to promote inclusivity, integration of younger people in our, in our political affairs. So we can only do that if we have a clear slot where we know 60% of all vacancies, of all positions, be it in the civil service or in the political arena, must be given to younger people. So this is going to be promoted by bringing a law, a policy, whereby 60% of all the vacancies go to the younger people. Then we have the issue of uh, promoting, no, protecting the legacy of uh, the late Vice Chairperson Jacob Lokori Olanya. Jacob, together with, with me, de developed what we call a blueprint for promoting a party in the region. Our region is in northern Uganda. It is a found next to South Sudan uh, on the upper end of, of, of the country, Uganda. So Jacob designed a blueprint, which he summarized the into loan. Loan is L-O-A-W-N. L-O-A-W-N. Loan. Meaning Lango, Acholi, and West Nile platform. These are the three sub-regions that form Northern Uganda, the greater Northern, Northern Uganda. So in that very blueprint, we have clear outlines of what we intend to do in Northern Uganda. Unfortunately, he died before we could really carry forward this thing. So I have stepped in to ensure that all the things we listed, like uh, promoting unity, education, investment, industrialization, human capital development, integration of our people together through cultural, educational, religious events, must be carried forward as we agreed in that blueprint. So if I don't step forward, some of these people will not come and promote that, uh, that, that, protect that legacy of Jacob Olanya, 
making it to be very bad. So I want his soul to rest in peace by implementing the agenda of law that we agreed together with. Yes. Wow, thank you very much. Yes, Freedom Jayan. Yes, you, you, from all that you said, it's so, 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 so paramount to the, uh, to the conclusion that you want to indeed create unity and you want to promote a democratic front whereby indeed corruption is a thing of the past, whereby ethnocentrism, as you said, is also a thing of the past, whereby gender inequality continues to decline, as you were speaking about how indeed even in Uganda, a lot of women are always nominated in various fronts and you want to promote that and how you want to see to the to, to, to equity development everywhere you want to see to youth participation this is very paramount and this is so that any of you are democratically yes. um, shortly expound on the your first four priorities translating unity uh, transparency and transgression participation if you can just work on the first four so, thank you Yes, actually, uh, we want to create unity. We want to create unity. Freedom Giant? My, my son is trying to disturb me a bit. Uh, Job, you go. Go inside. Genda. Go inside. Uh, my, let, me, let, let, me just, let, let me just send it. Let me just send my son away in, in one minute and, 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 and I talk to you. I get you, sure. Yeah, Freedom Giant. Freedom Giant? Freedom Giant. Yeah, Freedom Giant. Feel free, feel free, feel free. You send them away for, the, for about two minutes and we'll get back to you. Oh, are you okay now? Hello? Hello? Yes, we Hello, Freedom Giant. Hello? Yes, we hear Okay, you. Freedom Giant. Yeah, now. We want to promote unity. Okay. Hello, Freedom Giant. Yes, we hear you clearly. <laughs> <laughs> my, you know, my children love me so much. I have two children who love me so much. Great. They are trying to great, follow me great, up. Great, I, great. I get them out because of network issue. <laughs> I get you very much. I get you very Freedom much. Freedom Giant. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we want to create unity okay. we want to create unity by ensuring that uh, we stop tribal undertones in our in, in, in the political statements and the and the public statements made by our politicians and we want to ensure that in government agencies departments and ministries where a particular group of people are employed must be stopped because you cannot talk about promoting national interest when one MODA, one government, one government, one, one government agency is only is only employing a certain group of, of people. Those are things which promote sectarianism, which make which make people to become alienated, which make people to begin to feel less Ugandan, especially if they are not represented. So I have a clear policy outline around the six of them to address this issue clearly. Like, we have four major regions. I want every region to be given 25% of vacancies in all government departments so that they feel represented. That one is well, well, well catered for in the national objective and directive principle of our state policy in 1995 constitution that dictates that there must always be fairness in a, Distribution of national cake. National cake starts with distribution of national position. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Freedom Giant Job, Metua. I mean, you are just blowing our minds because your whole stand is not on other people who are so affiliated to their party's agenda, be it adverse or positive. You are neutral and you want to see a clear progression of freedom on the Ugandan front and also on the entire African agenda. I want to really help you for what you are doing. Now, before we end, do you have any final words that you want to give to everyone listening to you, to everyone who wants to say that, fine, let me follow Freedom Giant Job, make sure, even if I'm not a Ugandan, let me follow him, let me be a, a, a follower of him. 
And also, if I'm in Uganda, let me follow him and vote for him to be the deputy chairperson of the National Resistance Movement. What final words do you have for all Sanji who are listening to you? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Freedom Jaya. Number one, I want to inform Africa and the world that Uganda is good. Some people take wrong image, totally wrong and false image fabricated by them to international arena to try to paint my country bad. I can tell you, Uganda is very good country and very peaceful country. That is why refugees are running to Uganda. They are not running to other neighboring countries, which are even nearer them. For example, refugees from Burundi prefer to come to Uganda than even to run there in, to the neighboring countries which are near Burundi. So Uganda is good. And the second message is that we young Africans must stand up, go and take leadership positions to change affairs in the good way that we think about. We are not going to change affairs by being spectators, by being onlookers. We must join the pitch, we must enter the field and change the affairs the way we want from inside. You will not do that change from a position of talking from outside. We must go in leadership position. We must go in a position where decisions are taken. We must go and influence decisions so that we create the Africa we want, which is totally free, which is totally democratic, and the freedom we, we, we look for should also include economic freedom. Lastly, I want to thank you very much, my interviewer, Isaac Boadu, for this interview. May God bless you. May God bless Africa. Um, you yes, I'm, I'm, I'm live. Yes, thank you very much for all giving us uh, your time to have an interview with you. You've been very upright on everything you said, and we can really say that indeed you're on a democratic front. Indeed, the Freedom Board of African Voices International, the All Freedom Legends, All Freedom Giants, Generals, all stand with you in winning this position and also making the Uganda anatomy and the anatomy a better way ahead. We believe that yes, the right man. Africa a better one. Africa was the national freedom in Africa. Thank you and bye. Uh, bye 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 bye, so, bye freedom giant. Okay okay.